Okay. It's been a while, but I'm back. Back in the house, back on Lee Chess. I've been uh I've been busy the last few days. I've had no time for streaming. Also the um Wi Fi hasn't been the best. Uh let's play E4 this game. And for this stream I'm just gonna play the Rapid Arena. And I'm gonna play this uh this Panov attack line. We take twice on d5 and then develop. And usually white delays playing d4 just to accelerate development. Knight takes c3 as a move. Probably now is the time for d4. And then just develop the bishops. This guy is playing really quickly. I'm tempted to play bishop c4 and threaten bishop take f7, but then he'll probably play e6. And my bishop will be misplaced. So bishop e2 is a normal move, bishop e5 is an aggressive move. h3 is a move. d5 is a move. I forgot about d5. Maybe I can play h3, bishop h5, d5, and then wherever the knight moves I have bishop b5 check. Let's do that. Maybe he'll take on f3. Hmm. So d5. Bishop take f3. Queen take f3. It's a cheer. I haven't been looking at the chat, so um, I will after I destroy this guy. A d5. There's a funny line. d5, knight e5, knight take e5. Let's do that. I think black is in trouble. There's another funny line. I don't know if it works, but knight b8, knight e5 immediately. That might be too, too crazy. Hmm. I have a feeling knight b8 is the best move for him, and then I'll have to think. That move, it's possible. Actually, that's a playable move, too. Probably queen take f3. Unless I want queen a4 at some point. Nah, queen take f3. Bishop e5 will come. He's going to play this, and then bishop e5, knight d7. Should be better for white, but I don't think it's like completely winning yet. Bishop e5. Knight d7, then castle. Looks simple enough. a6. a6, bishop a4, b5, bishop c2. And I'll play a4 at some point. Okay. Yeah, the problem for black is he's severely underdeveloped. And with a pawn on d5, it's hard to... It's far, hard for him to develop and castle quickly enough. And I'm envisioning some scenario where I'm going to have this attack on the e-pawn. And then his king will t be tied down to the e-pawn. Uh, thanks for the sub. Aqua something. Name just disappeared. Aqua Laguna something? So earlier I said bishop c2, but now I'm thinking uh, bishop b3, knight c5. Mm, push the pawn. He takes d7. Whoa. Wait. Is this? That could actually work. Bishop b3, knight c5, d6. Threatening mate. He takes uh, the thing, and then I play d7. If he takes with queen, I win the rook. If he takes with king, I have rook d1 check. Let's do that. No guarantee he'll play knight c5, but it'll be nice if he does. Yeah, now I'm realizing that d6 can be met with e6. And then I have queen c6. Okay. This is interesting. The problem for black here is there's several different targets. And the tactics are just favoring white, because my pieces are well-placed. <laughs> He's just not fully developed. 
did he just sign off? Wait, is this green or gray? That's gray. He might... Oh, okay, he's back. So he probably forgot about d7. And white is winning some material. I'll win the queen. Or the rook. Life is good. Now I can look at the chat. Hello to people in the chat. Double Haze, the first commenter. Dawid Urbanski. That was a nice game. 17 moves. Um, yeah, usually, as far as I know in these lines, black should usually go for an earlier g6, bishop, g7, and castling. Or maybe even not knight takes c3, because it's trading off the only developed piece. But then, yeah, he got into trouble, because this, this diagonal is vulnerable. He was really just asking for d5. And the tactic at the end there was nice. Uh, in between move. Okay, back to tournament. Hello to more people. Torky TV. J Chess K. Cask J. Lots of J's. I'm doing well. Um, well, there's a lot of so many comments. Did I see Peshko won Elite Super Blitz? I did not see that. I really haven't been online today. I slept in. I've had such a long week. I needed some extra sleep. Ah, the Yeti is not back. I forgot. I, I could have gotten the Yeti for today. I'm using my my portable Go mic, which kind of gets the job done. It's probably a good sign that you asked if the Yeti is back, if the quality is good enough to maybe be confused with the Yeti. You never liked tea. What's wrong with you? Okay. Engine God. Uh-oh. That's a scary name. <laughs> That's a very scary name. <laughs> I don't think I want to wish him luck. At least his rating isn't so scary. He's from Antarctica. I didn't even realize Antarctica had a flag. Uh, let's play... Yeah, let's just be solid. Kamikaze Pilot, hello. It's also a scary name. Oh, he's thinking on move... <laughs> on move two. I don't know if there's much to think about. Maybe he's just loading up my stream. Who knows? St. Louis was good. It was a fun event. It was like... Four days of just entertainment. It was really busy for me. Uh, let's be solid. Let's play a Nimzo. Or a Queen's Indian. Or a QGD. Play a QGD. It's my main uh, my main repertoire when I just want to be solid. Yeah, Bishop G5. Ah, so I could... I could maybe go into a Cambridge Springs. Let's try it. I've been so frustrated lately, at least on Lee Chess, that no one ever goes into the Cambridge Springs. But it's about to happen. Just play E3. Okay, we have a Cambridge Springs. I can't remember if I've... I can't remember the last time I played this on stream. Probably played it at some point. It's an opening that I recommend for, for lower level players. Like anyone below 2,000, I think. Um, I think this can be a very effective opening to put the pressure on white from very early on because there's multiple pressure points and there's multiple ways for black to increase the pressure so I like to teach this opening to students it's um, easy to teach fun to play do I ever play queen b6 when someone plays an early bishop g5 um, probably not now I have to remember, this is slightly embarrassing because there's two different options here. Bishop d3 is not supposed to be a good move, but I have to remember why. Yeah, I'm going to take on c4 first. 
and bishop takes c4. And this is actually a fork. I'm forking two things. And black's just winning material. This is a great thing about the Cambridge Springs, is bishop d3 is just a mistake on move 7. I learned this. My, um, my first coach has taught this to me. It was such an enticing opening because bishop d3 is like the most natural move for white. But, okay, two things are attacked. Black is winning material. So, so far today, some, uh, some decent opening preparation. The last game wasn't really preparation, it was just winning early in the opening. But this is still preparation. He's debating which thing to allow me to, to capture. Yeah, bishop f4, okay, so I'll take, and I'll win at least a pawn. And then I'll go for bishop b4. So now I either want to trade queens or win a piece. Um, yeah, rook c1. So the thing about this position is white has a bit of compensation. I'm debating here, do I have to take on d2? Probably yes. Queen b2, rook c2. Okay, I'll take. So it's still going to take work from this position. Like, I'm up a pawn, but this bishop is terrible. He has, he has two bishops decently placed. I'm thinking king e7 here. There's no need to castle. And I control d6, preventing any sort of bishop d6. Someday I probably want to play e5, like f6, rook d8, e5, or maybe c5, like b6, bishop e7, c5. It's going to take a little bit of slow play to try and uh, unwind my pieces. So now I'm thinking b6. a4 is kind of discouraging knight b6. Though I could play knight b6 right away, bishop b3, knight d5, kick the bishop, and then create an outpost with knight b4 and a5. That might be reasonable. And I gain tempo along the way. Yeah, let's do that. Now the one thing, if he allows me to take on c4, never mind. I was going to say it could have been some opposite color bishop endgame. I mean, I guess he could still take its opposite color bishops. But then this makes my bishop happy. And opposite color bishops don't mean like dead draw. Um, I'm going to grind him down here. I have the extra pawn. I just have to make sure not to trade off all the rooks. He might want to play a6. So maybe, I mean, if bishop d7, then rook b1 is really annoying. So I might have to play a6 myself, which I don't really want to do. I could play, no, I can't play bishop f5 because a6. What to do? King d7 looks really bad, but maybe a decent move? With the idea that I'm not making any, any concessions and I want to play b6 and bishop b7. King d7 feels like a concession though. But I think it's, yeah, it, it keeps the options open. If I play a6, it's just so committal and then all my pawns are fixed. Because the thing is, when, when a6 is played, his two pawns fix my four pawns, which is not a pleasant situation. So I want to play b6 and try and get rid of this pesky a pawn, or even play b5 and just have a pass pawn. So rook b1 is a good move. Um, 
I'll still have to untangle. I'm thinking h5 or f6 g5. Yeah, his bishop's really annoying. Because I can't play rook b8. I'm going to start with h5. Try and get some sort of play on the king side. X Nyon finally caught a stream. Yeah, welcome to those of you who's your first time here, like watching live. So I think a lot of people start just watching on YouTube. And then slowly they, mi mi they migrate over to Twitch. Okay, at least I have a time advantage. H4 is a good move. Uh, he's playing um, he's playing decent moves. Put the rook on e8. Try and find a, a slightly more useful square. I don't really know what the plan here is for black. Maybe the plan is to play rook e7, king here, and then develop the bishop to make sure this pawn is protected. That's a scary move. I don't think he has a threat, though. Because if a6, I can still play b6. So I'll continue with my plan. Not sure how effective this plan is going to be. So the problem is, if I try king e8 next move, he has a6, and then my c-pawn is less defended. Have mercy. I can't have mercy on this guy. It's not an easy position to win. But at least everything's under control. Like, I'm up a pawn, I'm up on time, there's no risk of losing. It's a great situation to be in. And just because I can't win immediately doesn't mean I should panic. So, maybe f6. Always play f6. Except does he want to... No, if he plays a6, b6, rook c2, I have rook e6. So f6 sort of tries to restrict the bishop, maybe someday play g5. In some sense, it's just a waiting move. I'm envisioning someday if he plays rook b1 here, and then someday bishop f5 with tempo. That would be nice. Then I can bring my rook to d7 to defend b7. This is a positional struggle. Also envisioning some ideas of bringing the king to f5 to prepare g5. Because that's one thing about these endgames. And king activity can be pretty important. Why not rook e3? Rook e3. The e-pawn has three defenders. You probably meant rook e6. I just don't see what the rook does on e6. I play rook e7 because b7 is my biggest issue here. And in order to mobilize my bishop, I have to over-defend the pawn. So it's it's good he's thinking. Like, he probably just doesn't know what to do. I mean, I don't know exactly what to do either, but as long as he, it's his time ticking, I can't really complain. Hello to Govadami. Welcome. There's no increment, too. So, okay, he plays rook b1. So, I assume that's just a waiting move. He's waiting for this so he can play this. Calculating b5, en passant, rook a2, and it doesn't lead to anything. So maybe now rook e6 makes sense to over-defend c6. But then there's no great follow-up.
Maybe g6. g6, rook g7, and g5. Have to come up with something. Hmm. This might be a nothing plan, like this might make no sense, but at least hopefully it will make him think. And that's all I need. Did he just move back and forth? Okay, he's just wasting time, so let's make him think. And this might have some merit, like g5 can open some file, create some weakness, especially if that file opens. I can keep gaining space on the king side. Aha! Well, that's good. So he, <laughs> I made him so scared about g5 that he's taking measures to control or try and prevent eight, prevent g5 by targeting this h-pawn. But now he's loosened the attack on c6, which means now I have time. Do I have time for king e6? Maybe king d8. Yeah, king d8 could make more sense. Because I want my bishop to develop more actively. It's still difficult to untangle, but it feels like I'm making progress. And uh, for this stream, I'm not taking challenges. Ooh, bishop f5 comes with tempo. Whoa, I don't want iTunes to go away. Yeah, this stream I'm just playing the Rapid Arena. So now I have rook c8. And he doesn't have rook b1. But what does rook c8 do? It doesn't really do much. Maybe my, my king wants to go here, so then I have this and this. Maybe I should have started with king e8 rather than king d8. Why not keep my king on white? Like a light square? Yeah, maybe <laughs> that's probably right. I should have kept the king on light, but not. it wasn't relevant what color is square. The relevance was I, I free up the d8 square for the rook. Uh, and he's just wasting time again, so I can do this. I think. Actually, it's tricky now. But, okay, it feels like he doesn't have a plan. He's giving me a lot of free time. Yeah, he's just moving back and forth. So I'm going to get my so-called ideal setup. Now I want to bring the king back to c8. Maybe I start with rook e7, so I want access to this square. Okay. So this is the way I improve. Um, so it feels more comfortable now. <laughs> it still takes work to break through. I'm wondering, maybe this rook should be on h8 to then prepare g5. I could also play bishop e4, provoke f3. Mm, let's start with this. Uh, g5, take, take bishop e5. So I'll have to throw in... Maybe I'll play rook h7. A funny configuration. Ah, so he finally plays this a6 move. So now c6 could be a potential problem. But I'll have bishop d7. Also have king d7. 
just debating whether to play b6 or b5. Probably b6. Yeah, this is um, this is very safe. So you can't attack c6 another time. And now a6 is weak, potentially. I think I'll put the bishop back on d7, and then improve the king. <laughs> Maybe bring the king to f5. Now he's asking for g5. I think I'll start with this, though. Maybe with some idea of g5. g5, take, 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 take. Rook take f2. Hmm. Don't know if it leads to much. Well, let's bring the king in. He's going to flag. I wasn't planning to flag him. It's just such a long, kind of drawn out position. And now I'm winning a pawn. Or no, he has bishop d6. But then I'll win h4. Now I'll win f2. Two pawns. More pawns are weak. Ooh, free bishop. It's <laughs> an interesting idea. Okay, good game, Engine God. Scary name. It was, a, it was a weird game. He fell into an opening trap. But then it wasn't easy to win that position. And sometimes this is what happens even when your opponent fall opponents fall into opening traps. It still takes a lot of work to win a game. And a position like this is not easy to win. And I'm beginning to remember that bishop e4 might not, might not actually be the best move here. Because in some sense it's committing to giving away the bishop pair in this line. And I don't really want to trade off my dark squared bishop. Maybe I should have played knight f6. Check analysis board... Oh wow, so engine is not impressed with black. It's just equal. <laughs> so is there any way to get an advantage there? Hmm. Knight e4 immediately? No. I mean, of course I'd rather be black, just up a pawn. I feel like the engine doesn't understand this sort of position anyway. Because black should be able to untangle. But yeah, it was a fight. Okay. Back to tournament. 223rd place. Oh, there's 50 minutes left. I joined very late. I joined like after 1 p.m. Okay, uh, let's play e4. Today is an e4 type of day. At least when I'm white. I tend to like to play e4 more against lower rated players. Just an easier opening to play for a win with. Dawid Urbanski tried to play me today. <laughs> I remember when you said that. in a Like it was a tournament over with a thousand players and you ended up playing me. It was incredible. He just... Gave up? Oh, he didn't move. Okay. Whoa, I moved up like a hundred places with one win. I'm on a streak. Brooklyn boy in first place. Uh, I'm not accepting challenges now. In fact, maybe I'll just change my preferences. Preferences. Another d4. Okay. Chesswoman32 from Russia. Interesting. Plays a lot of rapid chess. Okay, I'll be solid. Maybe I'll have another Cambridge Springs. Play d5. It might happen. Two Cambridge Springs in a row. Please play knight f3. Yes. 
Okay, this will be fun. Oh, she knows what she's doing. Bishop take f6 is a good move. Knight d2 I don't think is necessary, though. I had a... I actually have a student who plays the Cambridge Springs, and I was going over this other day. Because usually white should play either bishop take f6 or knight d2, but the combination of those moves I think just allows bishop d6. Now I want to go for e5. Okay, knight b3 doesn't make me too upset. I'll just move, <coughs> move back. I want to play e5. Maybe I want a castle first. And c5 makes me very happy, because now e5 should be strong, strong when it comes. e5 right away. I feel like white should have played f4 make it a bit more difficult for me. Having trouble talking <coughs> is having some like cookie or <coughs> early... <coughs> I was eating a cookie earlier, and there's like cookie crumbs stuck in my throat. Not a pleasant situation. Um, but this is a pleasant situation. Pawn e5. We'll trade on e5. And then there might be some Greek gift possibility. I think if white castles here, bishop take h2. The white pieces are almost all on the queen side. Okay, knight d4. The queen e7 is a double attack. I'm threatening this and this. Queen e7. I mean, why not make white think? It's funny, but knight, uh, knight back to b3 might be the only move. I don't see any other moves. Then I can look to play d4, maybe. Whoa, that's a free piece. That was generous. Yeah, some nice openings today couple Cambridge Springs wins in the first game that Carol Khan win so the previous game my opponent didn't show up yeah White's position crumbled there like a cookie 64th place one point away from 2300 yeah my rapid rating has not been the best but okay big game I'll play e4 again yeah, I'm essentially sticking with the same uh, the same repertoire. If Toilet Noggin were here, I would play some Exchange Roy. Queen e7. Actually, Queen e7 has a funny trap to it. There's a trap that um, that White can fall into if I play Bishop c4, Knight f6, Knight g5. Black can play h6. If I take on f7, I lose a piece. But um, I don't think my opponent is playing this knowingly. I think I'll start with knight c3. Knights for before bishops. And maybe knight d5 is possible. But let's just develop. I'll castle and go for d4. And his queen will be terribly placed. Maybe it's difficult to punish, though. d4 right away. Oh, there's a funny trap. Oh, but it's not a trap. I was thinking b5. We trade in bishop d5, but the queen would support bishop b7. Okay, let's play a4, preventing b5. G sound. My Saturday is going pretty well. Decent game so far. I want to play d4. Like, I'm developed and castled, and my opponent has only developed the queen, and now is opening up the center. This cannot be good for black. Um, but why is it not good for black? d4 takes on e4. That's annoying. Maybe I just take and then go for d4 later, but then d5 will come. 
Yes, I do have to think. If I play d3 and then f4 can be played, then f4, d4. I wanted to play knight h4, but then queen take h4. So I'm wondering if d4, if I can sack a piece. Like knight take e5, pawn take e5, queen h5, check. Queen e2 is a move too. Yeah, queen e2 could be nice. I might have to accept that I'm not going to punish this guy immediately, which is really aggravating. So bishop take g8 is a move. This could be interesting, because in a lot of lines my, my bishop gets hit. So like bishop take g8, rook take g8, d4, pawn take e4, knight take e4, d5. The problem is e4 was is coming there. There's also rookie one. Rookie one, take, take, d5. My knight moves to g3, and this pawn is attacked. I think I'll do that. Just based on intuition. If I had more time, I would calculate more, but the fact that I have so many pieces developed, something should work out. D4 now. He's playing so fast. Well, now this pawn's undefended. And there's a funny line. If I take D5, I can take here and then go for D4. Let's do that. I've used a lot of time. He's just used over 30 seconds. I've used about four minutes. But this is a problem that his bishop is blocked. Like both bishops are blocked. The king is just stuck. And d4 will come, or some crazy sacrifice will come. d4 now. Oh, he wants to play e4. Whoa, I'm not even clicking the mouse. How did this happen? It's just... Wow. It's just, like, stuck to the mouse. I, like, usually it's click and drag. But I clicked and unclicked, and now it's just stuck. Let's not mouse slip. I've never seen that happen before. I don't even know what I did. Uh, can I play knight h4 with knight g6 ideas? I think there's two main ideas here, either d4 or knight h4. d4, e4 is critical, and then knight h4, and then d5, hmm. Let's just play knight h4. Because I defend the pawn, <laughs> knight g6 is unstoppable. And d5 just runs into knight g6, and e5 would fall. So, I know d4 feels more natural, but this just feels better. Okay, I'm out of tea. It's always a disappointment when I'm out of tea, I check my cup. And then I check my cup like 10 minutes later and I'm still out of tea. But knight g6 is pleasant. I could take... Could take with either thing. 
Oh, this is just crushing. It's just a matter of how to crush him and not flag. Let's do this. Looks fun. E files now open. If he plays king d7, I have this. If he plays king d8, I have knight take h8 with the threat of knight f7. Okay, win the queen. So now what's material? He has rook and piece for a queen, but I'm still um, still more developed than him. Maybe knight g6 or queen e2. I'll start with queen e2. Threatening some discoveries and threatening queen takes e4. Don't really want to lose this pawn. So I guess I can play g4. I'm just being greedy. This pawn is really strong. This pawn is bound to fall. And once I take here, I'll have queen f7 ideas, unless he queenside castles. But that's okay. D4, perhaps. Or d3. I'm so indecisive. Let's play d3. Keep this rank open. Maybe now knight g6. Hmm. Yeah, knight g6. And then bishop f4 will probably come very soon, because I just want to trade. Rook h7. What a move. Maybe just knight take. Yeah, let's take first. And queen d4. I want to play bishop f4 next, and rook e1. And with queen d4, I'm preventing queenside castling. Or not. <laughs> okay, so now if I take, I guess he wins g4. Uh, take, take. I have 97 check. No, wait, no, I don't. Let's just play bishop f4. Keep things simple. Should watch my time. I'm just going to improve, so why not? This is the only open file on the board. And I'm up some pawns. I haven't lost a single pawn yet. So I have three pawns and a queen for rook and bishop. So I can just trade everything. Well, let's play rook e7. Just go in for the kill. And this rook is completely stuck. Queen e5 will come. Or maybe queen c3. Or maybe knight f8. Two minutes is more than enough time to uh, to win this. Let's play queen f4. I would really like to make knight f8 work. Like knight f8, rook h8, knight e6. 
looks to be working. So this is a pin, this is a pin, this is a double attack, and 96 wins a rook. Okay, that was a strange opening. Just to show people what I was referring to at the very beginning, um, queen e7 has a trap to it where, okay, the most normal move for white is bishop to c4, knight f6. Let's disable engine analysis for a moment. Um, and then if white plays knight g5 here, black can play h6. And then if bishop take f7 or knight take f7, I believe black is better, even though the scores might not indicate that. Like if bishop take f7, white's now losing a piece. One of these are falling. And if knight take f7, there's rook h7. And with d5 coming, black is also winning a piece because this knight is trapped. Um, so just a weird variation. But anyway, back to tournament. Maybe time for one or two more games. Oh, I've had so much chess this week. Sometimes it's hard to play more chess. I'm top 50. Oh, wow. 873 people. I've only played... I've only played four games. One of those games my opponent didn't show up. Time for me to play a trappy line. Most of the lines I've played so far have been slightly trappy. I think like every game today I've had a pretty nice position from the opening. So I'll try and keep up that trend. <laughs> Playing a 1551. Huckleberry 90. Good luck. D4 again. Okay. I'll be more ambitious this game. E3. Well, now I have to be ambitious. Let's play C5. Maybe go for some kind of Benoni King's Indian setup. He's trying to be solid. I'll play B6 and Bishop B7. The setup, I think, whoa, was unexpected. I'm going to say the setup I was planning to go for was double Fianchetto with eventual E5. But now this just looks pleasant. Like, that was a good trade, d-pawn for b-pawn. I like to tell my more be beginner students this, but in the opening, center pawns are usually worth like 1.2 points in terms of just point value. And wing pawns like a and b pawns and g and h pawns are worth like 0.8 points. So a situation like this is a nice trade for black. So now it's a matter of just completing development. I would like to play d5. It allows bishop b5 check. So how to develop most efficiently? g6. Actually, no, I'll go for d5. With bishop b5, I'll just continue developing. Then maybe I'll play a6 or not. I could play e5. Or e6. Let's play e5. That's the, mo the most principled move. Doesn't too happen too often when I'm black and just have a massive center like this. So, okay, the plan is to complete development. And then someday try and open things up. go for this. Like thing about this position is white setup isn't easy to crack, but it's very passive. So the strategy is just to kind of keep improving to try and do some squeeze. Let's play queen b6 ideas of c4. Because this is a target, this is a target, this is a target. e3 is actually difficult to defend. 
if I play c4, I don't think white can defend e3, unless he wants to play king f2. Maybe d4. D4 looks pleasant. Can you stop me from playing c4? But if I play d4, he plays e4. Hmm. That's still a nice position for black. I'm debating whether to leave the tension, but I think I'll play d4. I'm just trying to play principled moves. Yeah, okay, the center closes. I'll go for this maneuver. I'm happy with the position, but it could be a long game. These positions are not easy to win right away. Unless I have... Does this work? d3? Bishop take d3 and then queen here. I'm threatening the bishop and I'm threatening this double attack. d3 could be a beautiful tactic. Ah, uh, he has knight f2. So d3, bishop take d3, queen d6, knight f2. That's unfortunate. Thanks for the cheer. But I have to focus. Let's play rook d8 first. The threat is very obvious, but maybe he'll miss it. Yeah, mindless cargo. Thanks for the bits. Okay, he just hung a pawn, and he's allowing d3. Oh, maybe it's a trade of pawns. Hmm. Let's just take. I want to win this game and have time for another game. So I'll try and up the pace. Knight c3 looks nice. Knight c3, queen e1, queen g6. Ah, uh, knight f4. Mm. I feel like this should be easier, but it's slightly frustrating. I'm going to play knight g6. <laughs> Just go after e5. Hello, MJ Nikur. With no vowels in that name. <laughs> uh, thanks for the comment. It's good to see a lot of new people here today. People that come from YouTube. Introduced to Twitch. Bishop h4 looks very enticing. Bishop h4. Because where does the queen move? Maybe g3? And then rook take e5. There's some crazy line where he takes on g6, I take his queen, and then he starts winning a lot of material. But that should be good for black. And queen c6 is also enticing, but that runs into bishop f3. So I'm calculating rook take e5, queen f2. And then maybe just bishop f6. Yeah, this is just a great position for black. So my bishop is monstrous, my knight is monstrous. Oh, this could be some mating idea. 92. How can I make it work, though? I could just take the, the bishop on h5, because he has one check. making sure I'm not getting back rank mated. 
I have a knight on g6. And I just want knight e2. Which isn't mate. Knight f4. Just looking for the quickest way to mate. Does knight e5? Oh, that doesn't trap the queen. It hangs a rook. Okay, there's so many wins here. I'll just take on f4 and then go for knight e2. Nathan! Welcome back, Nathan. Thanks for the thousand bits. Long time no see. Just in time for this brutal finish. You just have to make sure not to blunder queen f8. And life will be good. Okay, let's take this. And now I'll be up a rook. And I'll be mating very soon. I've used a lot of time this game. It took energy. Okay, he takes a bishop. So knight d3? I'm just looking for mates. Or knight h3. I'm just gonna, gonna play knight g6. I just want to win the queen. Make him resign. How should you practice chess? There's lots of ways to practice chess. You can play, play online, play on Lee Chess, play longer games if you want to improve. Or leechess.org slash puzzles. I think that's the right link. And you can just train tactics. Or you can just watch me. It's a, a decent form of practice. So there's about 20 minutes left in the tournament. I think I'll have time for at least one more game. Uh, let's take this. This is going to be mate somehow. Some way. Where's a mate? Queen c3. Bishop here. More bits from Nathan. Back at school, very busy. Yeah, I understand. School is, is busy. Um, I've been there before. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, thanks for stopping by. I do appreciate it. I feel like a good portion of my viewers are still in school, one way or the other. Uh, back to tournament. Yeah, that was a strange opening. Uh, let's go back. Top 30? Hopefully I'll get to play at least one stronger player. Have I tried to contribute to Lee Chess as a developer? No, I have not. I have reported a few bugs, but apart from that, I don't have the the coding skills to contribute code. So I just contribute content. That's an easier approach. Uh, what did I study? In terms of chess or in terms of school? In school I studied, uh, pursued a major called interactive digital media, which is all about emerging technologies re relating to media. So web development, design, photography, video production, marketing. So anyway, OK, I'm playing another decently low rated player. Um, let's play. Yeah, I'm just going to stick with the same repertoire. I haven't played a French yet. I'll play what I usually play against lower rated players, the two knights attack. d4 is a move, d4 is very playable, 
usually gives white a, a comfortable way to develop. And I like this position, even though black has more space, the knights on the king's side make it easy to attack. I also keep my king safe in my castle. Bishop d6. He wants me to play e5. Maybe I'll play e5. The issue with e5 is it gives him the d5 square. It opens up this diagonal. So it's a trade-off. Oh, let's do it. it. Gives me the e4 square. And I'll accelerate development. Also, this knight is going to have a harder time developing if he moves back to e7. And maybe what I'll do, I'll put my bishop on e4 and queen on e2 and try and restrict his development. We'll start with queen e2. Kind of hoping he castles here, because that would be nice. Okay, knight g6 is playable. I could play knight h5 and question his g7 pawn. Because knight f4 is coming. Yeah, let's play knight h5. Pass pawn. Yeah, long time no see. A lot of people I haven't seen in a while returning today. Do I make more mistakes putting less effort against lower-rated players? Um, I just try and play good moves. But sometimes, yeah, it's, it's possible to be careless. I try and find ways to make the game interesting so I don't get bored. Castling... But sometimes I get tired which is maybe easily confused with boredom, but I don't know, chess is tiring sometimes. The problem here is he has two more ways to attack the e-pawn. I don't have too many more ways to defend the e-pawn. Pass pawn 99, thanks for the sub. So this system of development maybe wasn't the best approach. Thinking I should castle. Wait. No, I have I have serious problems to solve. But maybe yeah, castle and rookie one. Let's do it. I'm not happy with this position. I mishandled it somehow. Maybe bishop d3, this is just the wrong idea. Had to take a bit more precautions. Welcome back, Solar Artistic and Lemon Chief. So yeah, this is a problem. I can't play rookie one because he wins a pawn. I would like to like go crazy and attack him, but that's hard to do. So I think I'll just take on g6 and then retreat. And I'll hold on to the pawn. Interesting. So he opens the f-file. But in some ways, taking with f-pawn is weakening to the e-pawn. I don't know. It's double-edged. Black has two bishops, but this bishop is garbage until it develops. And meanwhile, I want to complete development too. It's going to be a fight. I would really like this pawn to come to f4. 
But that's hard to achieve because my knight is always going to be tied down. g5, wow. So he wants to remove my knight so he can win the pawn. So maybe h3. Now I would like to play knight e4 and just double attack. Or maybe just d3 first. But I think it was necessary to stop g4. Now he's allowing the trade. Knight take g5. Probably knight take e5. I think I'll throw in rook e1. I might actually like to play c4 very soon. Like if he plays h6, probably the most expected move. I could throw in c4. If he takes, I take back with the d-pawn. Unleash the bishop, open the d-file. If he doesn't play h6, maybe he doesn't have to. g6, that was unexpected. G6 is very strange. I have no idea how it helps him, and it just it's weakening to F6, which I can't exploit right away. Let's play C4. I just want to remove the queen, open the position up. Which might feel strange, because black has a bishop pair, but his bishops are very much restricted. Do I have a threat here of trapping the queen? I think I do. Please play b6. Actually, I, I like the situation. Oh, he saw it. So I was thinking that he would be so inclined to defend this pawn, which now I can take. I was hoping for like b6, so rook d1 would trap the queen. But um, okay, now I just win the pawn for free. And rook d1 will come. Okay, now it's a good position. This f6 is really weak, h6 is weak. He did have rook take f3 earlier, which may have been a good move. Okay, his queen is going to get kicked around. It's great when I can kick around the queen and improve the pieces at the same time. Hello, I'm Singer. Welcome back. I sound sick. Sick as in awesome or sick as in not feeling well? Yeah, I'm a little bit burnt out from the, from the recent uh, past few days. I've been, I've been struggling with allergies too. It's been difficult. Elastic hold, I might play, I'm not sure. If I play, I have to register soon. Hello, Ipshi. I did not completely kill Carlson. I just beat him in one game. Uh, let's play knight f6. Yeah, this is looking very pleasant. <laughs> Most of his pieces are doing nothing on the queen side. And my pieces are doing something on the king side. Let's play bishop h6. I want to bring the other knight in. NASA court. I'll look into that. C4. 
his rook is about to be trapped. It's funny, rook e7, bishop f8. Yeah, this is too much fun. Wondering if I have anything stronger. Rook e7. Maybe rook d6. Nah, bishop f8 is good enough. <laughs> rook is completely trapped. Yeah, I felt a little bit uncomfortable at some point when I had to take on g6, but now I'm feeling very comfortable, at least over the board. Ninjo, welcome back. Lots of people returning. Okay, let's take in rook d7. Oh, whoa, 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 queen c6 could be a problem. Actually, maybe it's not a problem. Just scared me for a moment there. It's probably not a problem. Yeah, it's not a problem. Let's do this. Queen c6, I'll play queen g4. H7 is hanging too. I completely forgot about that. But I would rather take on H7 with a rook rather than a knight. Okay, so I'm not getting mated in one. Good book to improve visualization. There's a book called Forcing Moves. Which I think is a good book. I had a friend who, who read Forcing Moves in high school, and he went from like 1200 to 1800 within like a year or two. But I think it trains other things in visualization, or in addition to visualization, but it's a great book. Evolving Ape is currently reading Forcing Moves. Interesting. Um, how do I win? immediately. I really want to play queen h4, but that would get mated. So what to do? Knight f7. Oh, there's so many ways to win this. I'm just so indecisive. Let's play rook d1. Threatening this. Riemann Hypothesis is back. I could have played f3, but Ben Feingold told me never to play f3. Okay, let's take with check. Yeah, this is complete destruction. King g7, I take e6. Ah, this will be a funny mate. King f7, rook f8 mate. Or king h6, rook h8 mate. So there's four minutes left in the tournament. I don't know when pairings close, but this could be the last game. Yeah, it's very possible this will be the last game. And I broke 2300, I didn't even realize it. I was 2299 at some point. Won just enough games. So this guy, this guy is probably crying. He played a good game up until a certain point. What was the mistake?
Oh, uh, yeah, he should have played h6. Just defend g5. I was impressed he defended against rook d1. Maybe he heard me <laughs> on stream saying I was threatening to trap the queen. How do ratings on Lee Chess compared to chess.com? I'm not entirely sure. I'm sure analysis could be done. Maybe it varies from player to player, but um, hey, I gained one rating point. Okay, I think that was a decently successful tournament. I don't want to play another game. I think I want to end it there. Thanks, Wolfing, for the, the 100 bits. I think it's time to get outside and walk around. Get some fresh air. Um, what did I want to do? I'm already forgetting. I wanted to do something. Oh, I wanted to say hi to Toilet Nuggin. I'm just dropping by. You're dropping by, by right when I'm about to end the stream. Um, but overall, I think the games were instructive. Hopefully people enjoyed that. I'll probably put this on YouTube at some point. Um, but yeah, apart from that, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, I might be back later tonight. There's a very strong possibility because I finished work this week. This week was so hectic. If, um, if people sent me messages, I'm planning to respond probably later tonight, before or after my next stream. Um, to answer the question, if I coach, my schedule is getting busier, but you can find out more information using the coach command, and that will take you to my coaching profile on LeeChess. So, uh, goodbye everyone, and let's just raid, let's raid Fiona, Fioncetta, Fioncetta who is currently streaming. She's been streaming for a long time. Is she still alive? Ah, she is. Okay. Excellent. Okay, bye guys. I'll see you in the future, which is probably going to be tonight. Adios.